Welcome again to our program. I'm Harry Greenberger. I'm the president of the New Orleans Secular Humanist Association and the host for this show. Uh, we previously have done a show regarding what it's like to become a non-believer and uh, felt like that there's still more to be said on the topic because so many of you wonder what it must be like to live in a society where most of the people are church-going people or religious people and we represent a smaller percentage, whether it's 10 or 15 percent of the total U.S. population, doesn't matter. It is millions of people. So uh, we have some of the members of our organization who were willing to uh, come on board and talk, talk about this topic. I'd like to introduce them to you. Robert Sutton. Charlotte Classen and Dennis Dwyer. And uh, I, well, let me just say that we don't all go by the same labels. This program is a program of secular humanists. Some of us call ourselves atheists or agnostics or naturalists or non-theists or humanists. Uh, irrespective of what, uh, what caption we might place before our, our name. Uh, we do have something in common, and that is that we uh, do not uh, ascribe anything to a supernatural power. And so I'd like uh, for us to, to, to today discuss some of the aspects of being uh, non-religious and how, what sort of lives we live and what kind of more morals we have, if we have any, because there are those who would say that... Uh, if you don't get your morals from the Bible, then you have no basis for morality. And also how, as adults, we, um, we uh, fit into the society. So I'm just going to throw those topics on the table and just let anyone who wants to get things rolling to step right up. Well, as far as uh, morality... And being a moral person without religion, I don't think religion actually is necessary to be a moral person. The, the, the laws of society that we learn as we're growing up, if we abide by those laws, we will be a moral person. I don't think we need religion to teach us morality. When you say laws, are you talking about living a legal life as opposed to a moral life? Are you talking about civil laws, or what are you talking about? Well, um, I think morality is basically like uh, the golden rule. All right. Do unto others. Okay. Okay. Um, and I think if, if, if people do that, they'll find that it comes back to them. People treat them the way they treat other people, but the, but and, and if you don't do that, then it's gonna it's gonna come back on you. People won't treat you uh, fairly in everyday life. You you might end up getting in trouble with the law, that type of thing. But the, but the religious people will tell you that the golden rule is is their concept that it comes from their religion, which of course is not true. They borrowed this from from morality that existed long before they wrote their books. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I like the Confucius version better than the one that most people use, which goes, don't do unto others what you would not want them to do to you. Mm -hmm. Either way you put it, it goes back centuries before uh, Christianity or, or Judaism. or mm -hmm. They borrowed that concept because it was good and it worked. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's not as though we are using a religious concept. They're using one that developed through civilization. But now, why did that come about? Well, because it was, it was helpful to society to have something that grouped them together and that gave them guidelines of how to, to, how to exist in a group. Because if you think about the chaos that you can have in a group of people that have no laws at all or that it's forming, you would come, have to come together and say, what are, what are our beliefs as a society? And religion was one way of accomplishing that historically. Well, if you go way back to where uh, in original civilization there were like clans or families mm -hmm. and they had to stick together and help each other generally defending themselves against some other group of people. 
and uh, and within that little uh, within that little community, they had to help each other, which is uh, is a, a basis for the golden rule. When society advanced and it got beyond just little family groups and became like towns or cities, mm -hmm. they also had to support each other uh, against the enemies. Mm -hmm. And so again, it was a matter of as we can each one of us will fare better if we help each other. Mm -hmm. are, you, are you all yeah. in agreement with me? And furthermore, if you grant someone, if you grant yourself the right to lie or steal or murder, you are granting everyone else the right to do that to you. Mm -hmm. So how is that to your advantage? What I'm saying is that morality comes from the experience of developing civilization mm -hmm. and what worked to the advantage of the group and consequently the individual mm -hmm. is what was retained. Mm -hmm. And so if someone asks us, you know, where does your morality come from? We don't have to point to a line in the good book that says, it says here, thou shalt not. You, do you all agree? Mm -hmm. Well, what about what about the uh, the the, the uh, thou shalt not? So how many of them do you consider applicable, applicable to non-believers and applicable to society today? Nine out of ten of the Ten Commandments are, are essentially secular laws that were in effect before Moses went off to the mountain with his hammer and chisel hidden in it under his robe. And, and chiseled them into stone. It was it was all uh, secular law. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. All of that Have was a was ass or right. All of that. The, the only one that does it. Is the only one that's religious is about <laughs> believing in God. Well, I, I, I somewhat disagree with you because the the first of those commandments, and I couldn't name all ten. Me neither. But when they say you you must obey the Sabbath, that one is religious. You should have no other gods before me. Right. You should have no in no graven idols. Right. Those three are all strictly religious. That right. has nothing to right. do with with your behavior toward other people. Now, when you when you get, and I'm not so sure about that one about coveting. <laughs> <laughs> now, is is it is it as bad to have in your mind something? That would be bad. Is that as bad as doing it? No. 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 <laughs> no, because all because you can only know somebody by what they do. I mean, is that not a religious uh, so you would principle? Say that, that you would say the commandment about not coveting your neighbor's yeah. slave uh, uh, aren't is, is 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 not uh, really a valid sort of. Well, you can only if you live in a free society, you can only judge someone by what they do. We we, we don't have a a way of, of of getting to them before they do it because we're all we all have our moments of anger, of passion that can drive us to do things that maybe on a another day we would never do. And so uh, in a free society, we we all we can do is say we can only judge you by your actions. And in our society, we now have laws to help us deal uh, with that. So you don't